welcome back to the Diabetic Diet Show. Today's show is Glazed Pork Meatloaf, show number 203. We start out with the ingredients, a package of pork, at least 10 ounces, two cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of a soy glaze. You can just buy it in a bottle. I dumped them in these little trays that you get from the uh, supply house, speeds things up. Next, you need some sesame oil, and I buy the big bottles of sesame oil, and uh, just measure it out. Next is your ginger, so you only need about a quarter of a piece like this. If it's frozen, scrape it with a spoon. If not, you can cut it, chop it, whatever you want. You need potatoes. I'm doing five potatoes for two of us, and you want to boil these. So get them boiling, that's the first thing you got to do. Next ingredient is a Hossein sauce. Hossein sauce tastes like licorice, so it's, it's a gel licorice, fantastic tasting, you need to try it. Of course, you need some bread crumbs, so I buy the panko bread crumbs, in the big container, measure them out. And there's one ingredient that's on this recipe that I am not gonna use, but I gotta tell you, when I tasted it, it was good. It's an Asian type of a mix, and it looks like you'd pronounce it Sambal Olek. It is a salty, hot, olive tasting type of a liquid. It is good, but it's hot, and I'm not real into hot stuff. So, these are the ingredients. Potatoes are boiling. Let's get this going. While the potatoes are boiling, I need to get going on my ingredients. So I take my bag and my pan, loaf pan that I'm going to cook in. I got everything all ready here. Now I'm going to dump this into my Ziploc bag with the oil. Half the oil goes in now. Save the other half for later. I like to put this in the refrigerator for a period of time. Whether you let it soak overnight or at least a half a day. And then I'll cook it later this afternoon for dinner. For the breadcrumbs, I sprinkle them in as well. Need to make some room here. Garlic. I think it's already been cut here. A lot of this garlic I did when I brought it home from the store, so ready. Some of it has a few more pieces on it that need to be brought off. And you can tell the difference between refrigerated garlic and fresh garlic that comes out of my basket from there. The refrigerated garlic is a little bit softer. dump this in the pan you start to cook this. Turn this a little bit because this stuff is spicy. Matter of fact that's all I'm going to use of it. 
I like strong tasting food. I just don't like real, real spicy food. I always like to play it safe with the food when it's for me. I know other people like it. Well, here's my meatloaf mix. Put my last little bit of oil in here. That, I'm leaving a lot of air in the bag, so I have a nice bag. Mix it all together. Doesn't look great, but I'll tell you, I can smell all these spices. I can't wait to put this in that loaf pan and bake it in the oven. Meatloaf, you gotta bake for a while. Gonna massage it just like that. There we go. Now, potatoes are done. Now, switch to the choy. This is easy. Cut the bottom roots off just like that. Discard. Cut right about there. Like that. That gives you that little center bit there. You can save these leaves, you can use them for a garnish. Bag them up if you want. Smells great. I don't know what I would do without Ziploc bags. Too big? Here's a little tip about Ziploc bags. They come two different ways. Typically the red ones are your refrigerator and the blue ones are your freezer. The blue ones cost more than the red ones. So if you go through a lot of bags like I do, you want to buy a lot of the red ones. They come sandwich size, which is the really, really short ones. Let's talk about, let's talk about Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags come short in the sandwich size. Sometimes they're Ziploc, sometimes they're not. Then you have gallon bags. Both bags come either red or blue. Red is refrigerator, blue is freezer. Also, there is two gallon bags. So when I prepare a meal for the show, I take all the stuff that I'm planning on using for the show and I fill up a two gallon bag and I throw it in the refrigerator. So when I pull it out, all I gotta do is say, this is show number such and such and I have it all in the bag and ready to go. So that'll help to make you really organized. The last bags that I wanna talk about is the seal -a meal bags. So you get a seal -a meal like this, it's electric, you plug it in and you get bags in a roll like this that you put through it and you hit the button and it seals them. It makes your food last two to three times longer than if you just use a regular bag because air is what kills your food. If you've ever seen like an apple or an avocado, as soon as you expose it to air it starts to brown. Although I did see on TV that they have a new apple which is yellow that does not brown. So that's interesting. I'm sure they'll be expensive and be sold out. We're down to the last part of making this meal. We have the potatoes have been boiled and we need to mash them. Bok choy is all cut up. We need to cook that. 
The meatloaf is all set and ready to go into the pan. The first thing I need to do is to cut up some garlic. So let's just knock the ends off the garlic. Just like that. The paper should be off these already because these were already cleaned. Just that little part was not. And then what I'm going to do to clear my cutting board here is I'm just going to use this press. And I'm just squishing. Let me bring it over here where you can see it. I'm just literally squishing the garlic into the bowl of potatoes. Then we just mash the potatoes like that. I'm going to set them aside for a minute. It's also important to have your the diet diabetic show coffee cup. I'm shooting for a thousand subscribers, and I'm going to order several hundred of these and pass them out to my early subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe click on that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner and of course to refresh your memory all the ingredients and also all the instructions are at my website jamestdds.blogspot.com I need to get this meatloaf going in the oven if you're using a big oven you would need to preheat your oven to about 400 degrees right now I want to use my smaller oven What's funny about a small oven is that it cooks so much better because it's a smaller area that it needs to heat. And because this is a late night after work, I want to get this going as quick as I can. And I'm literally just squeezing this and working this all set and ready to go but I just had to work it a little bit like that and then I pull it out and I make a roll out of it drop it in the pan form it nice and clean with the gloves. And the oven is preheated at 400. Throw that in. You have to ultimately check it with the thermometer to make sure that it's every bit of 170 plus. Probably going to be a good 40 minutes, but I would check it after 20 and see where you are. And then check it again in 5 or 10 minute increments. Let's get the burner going for the bok choy. Get it nice and hot. And work some more on these potatoes. You can only do so much with a masher. You really have to use a fork. If you save some water from your reserve when you boil these, you might want to put some in or you might want to put in some olive oil. Also, 
Let's throw in a little bit of cream. I have a little bit of heavy whipping cream left over. And I have my famous Mexican basil, which you know you probably buy as oregano. Put it in my hand, rub it together, breaks it up, warms it up, excites it. Very good. Black pepper. <laughs> Gotta have a lot of black pepper. Using pink Himalayan salt. And potatoes always get more salt than other things. You have to salt your bok choy. And also black pepper on that. Try not to get it in my coffee or that'll be interesting. This is original cream cheese. About that much. I smell the olive oil, it's starting to smell good. All food, you know that it's cooking when you can smell it. Or it's done when you can smell it. There you go for the potatoes. Bok choy. Three to five minutes on the bok choy. As I pull this out of the oven, I can tell you that it smells delicious. You have to check it with your thermometer just to make sure. I checked it to make sure that it's over 160, absolutely over 170. It is actually 190. So it's all set. All I have to do is plate this up. Everything looks delicious. So the meatloaf is a little warm. Careful handling that pan. I just put something like this on the side of it for the moment. And I try to get like a good spoonful. Just like that. And then I get my bok choy, get a nice spoonful, and your potatoes. Also, one thing I wanted to mention about the potatoes is you can substitute some of the ingredients that I used. There's things you could use like mayonnaise in place of sour cream. Also, with the garlic, there is liquid garlic that you can buy in a bottle and uh, use that as well. Well, this looks really good, really delicious. I can't wait to eat it. It smells so good. So, have a good night. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.